thank you uh, Grace and Adam for taking the time to meet up with me today. Really appreciate it. So I have a few questions. Um, how was your life before you became Muslim? I feel I'm so lost. I just feel that I don't have any purpose in my life. Every day I just do what everyone is doing. Just wake up, go to work and then go home and then that's it. Something is missing. Something very big thing in my life is missing. I, I just couldn't find the answer until I get to know about this now. Salam alaikum. Um, before I become Muslim, actually I was a uh, I was born in a Catholic family, so I was very active in the church. So I grew up in the church. I have the spiritual uh, part of, of that. However, uh, being a Christian, uh, there was one burning question, in, in, which is, uh, how can Jesus be God when uh, when He's a human being? How did you discover Islam? I actually met up with uh, my client for the first time. And then when he passed me his name card, his name is uh, Brian Muhammad. After the meeting, I asked him the question like, So, do you actually uh, stop eating pork and drink alcohol and <laughs> things like that? Then he asked me that, why would you like why, like to go? Then I, I said that, I think because normally people became Muslim because of marriage. He was laughing and then he, he showed me the wife pictures. And then I look at the wife pictures and like, your wife does not look Malay <laughs> and then uh, he told me that my wife is a Chinese and I'm like okay how can that be so both of us embrace Islam so I'm like you know if my jaw can drop to the floor it will drop to the floor I'm like you must be a crazy couple and I think everyone is thinking both of us are crazy couple nowadays <laughs> when they know that we are both embrace Islam by our own will he talked about to me he talked to me about Tawhid one God, which actually this is the question that I've been asking throughout my life. As a Taoist myself, we pray to many many different idols, except Allah I would say. And I learned more about uh, the Creator, which is Allah, and I know that this is something that I should really learn more about it. How do you learn more about Islam from that one? Uh, he actually uh, invite me to attend classes at al -Qadim. When I go to al -Qadim, my intention is to find fault. Seriously, I, I, I don't think that Islam should be the, the one, you know. When I go to al -Qadim, I have a mission that I want to make Ustaz life difficult. <laughs> so I ask a lot of questions, you know. Like, why can I touch a, a dog? Why the man can marry for wife? But whenever Ustaz explained to me all these things, the answer seriously amazed me. I, I, I just like, oh, this is something that really from <coughs> God. It cannot be from a human. The more I ask, the more I fight about it, the more I feel that I'm nearer to the truth. Yeah. So after three months, I think in this struggle, I actually know that I'm already a Muslim in my heart. And after six months, then I say my shahada. For me, <coughs> it was at work that there was a project that we had to do this project uh, in, in 24 hours so I was assigned as the night shift the technical representative and I was talking to the night shift of the operation uh, representative so we were talking during break so I was asking him about Islam because I, I used to you know discuss religion with others so that you know, uh, I can introduce Christianity to, to <laughs> others. So as I was talking to these uh, colleagues of mine, I asked him about Islam. So I asked him a lot of questions. And then I remember he, he couldn't give me answers. So I said, okay, now I, I got him. You know? Then he, he said, but, but, but he didn't give, give up on me. He told me, um, you ask very good questions, but I, I, I don't know the answer. But what I can tell you is um, tomorrow, if you don't mind, I can bring you some CDs so you can watch the CD and find the answers yourself. So I said, okay, fine. So then come tomorrow. I went to see him, you know, with confidence. And said, so where's the CD? What's, where's the CD you were talking about? You know, I, and then 
it's not like he was the one who came to me. So I went to see him. Said, Where was the seat here? Give me the seat. So he, he said, oh, okay. He, he did find, uh, bring, bring along the, the CDs and he gave it to me. So when, as I took the CD, I found out, hey, this is Ahmad Didat, the, the debate. The debate between Ahmad Didat and, uh, and uh, Pastor. And the title of the debate was, was Jesus Crucified. So I went back after the project, after the project is finished. So I went back to, to my home. I started watching the, the CD. The, the whole debate was very interesting. So I was, after watching the whole debate, I got very angry. I, I, told my, I asked myself, how can a Muslim stand in front of everyone using Bible to convince uh, the Christians that Jesus were not crucified? He did not even use the Quran, he was using the Bible. I got even more anxious. I said, how can all the all this while the religion that I have embraced and really believed in, how come now there are so many loopholes? So I, I start uh, digging into more and I found out that so Jesus even mentioned about the coming of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I, I said, how can that be? You know? And I also found another book that written by uh, but also now he, he become a scholar so he wrote the book there was two volumes of book that he actually looked at uh, all the all the spiritual books all the so-called holy scriptures in all other religions the buddhism the hinduism the, all, all the you know uh, all, all their books they, he actually found out each of the scriptures all of the major religions the scriptures actually mentioned the coming of muhammad i bought the book and i i read the book and I was even more convinced that Muhammad must be the final messenger. Finally, it struck me and, and I said, you know, I finally found, found myself being cornered. And I said, if everyone else is talking about him, meaning the coming of the last messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa and he also confirmed all these other prophets has, you know, exist before, then it answered my burning question. Then Jesus was never gone. He was just a human being. He was the messenger of Allah. So how did you guys met? I met him on the day I see my shahada. <laughs> how long have you guys been married? Coming six. Six years. <laughs> six years. Okay. <clears throat> how is it um, uh, being married, um, living with each other as we birds all this while? How does it feel? It's hard. <laughs> 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 couple it's just like any other couples it's the same the best part is uh, we know what we want in our life we know the path that we want for our children for ourselves and we always uh, support each other in doing the things in uh, for, 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 for the sake of our life for dunya and uh, what's your favorite part in uh, for me it's like um, a yearly <coughs> reminder you will actually wanted to be closer to our and you will strive to be a better person and you know it could be the last Ramadan for ourselves. In the month of Ramadan, you get I get more fresh air. Because Muslims don't smoke during the day. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Can you imagine if after Ramadan all the Muslims quit smoking? Remember the, the Prophet wasalam, has never started something good and leave it after that. He would always continue. So as a Muslim, it is a reminder for all of us. If we stop smoking in the month of Ramadan, we should stop. Eating. If you start picking, picking up the book of Allah in the month of Ramadan, after that, continue. Thank you for sharing your experience. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much.